funny thing about the Jazz Thunder series is that while it is being branded as a huge upset in the making, it, it's not really, right? I mean, sure, Oklahoma City way outpaces the Jazz in magazine covers, but Utah has the front runner for Defensive Player of the Year, one of the league candidates for Coach of the Year, and one of the most sensationally exciting rookies to come along this decade. Last year was a huge year for surprises. We saw Victor Ledipo after being given up again by another team and traded. He developed into a star and led the Indiana Pacers to a near 50 win season and taking the Cleveland Cavaliers and LeBron James to seven games. We also saw the Boston Celtics get to the Eastern Conference Finals without not only one, but two of their star players. And then we also even saw the Philadelphia 76ers. Though we knew that they were going to be great going forward in the future and they had some good solid young players, we didn't think that they would be contending in the Eastern Conference and possibly make the finals. N nobody was seeing that coming. And Markel Fultz still has not shown that immense potential that we all know he has as a scorer. And then that leads into me the biggest surprise of this past season and that has to be Donovan Mitchell and the Utah Jazz. Well, why do I want to make a video on this team? Well, it's because of the fact that I think that a lot of people are sleeping on what this team could possibly do next season. Now, I know the Golden State Warriors are the biggest favorites to win the NBA championship, and I'm not saying that they're going to be the second team or even the third team to contend with this organization for a championship. But I definitely think that a lot of people are just throwing away the Utah Jazz's chances of contending in the Western Conference. Well, for one, let's look at this roster. This is a roster that consists of Ricky Rubio, who had his best season by far last year, shot the three ball at around 35% from the three. And also you have a player like Rudy Gobert, who in my opinion, can put himself among the five best big men in the league. Even though he's not an offensively oriented big man, he definitely knows his role and defensively, he has to be the best center in the entire NBA. And then you also have a player like Joe Ingles, knows his role, plays defense at a great level, and can shoot the three ball. He can handle it a little bit as well. You also have Derek Favors, who last year had a really productive season, stayed healthy. Hopefully, he can do that again this upcoming year. And of course, the one and only Donovan Mitchell, who surprised every single person on the planet. I mean, he was phenomenal from the moment he got the starting job up until the end of the season balled out and the thing is for the first 20 games he wasn't even really the first option or at least they didn't really know what to do with him but then when they really started giving him the keys to the offense in my opinion that started around the time I believe I would say 10 games before Rudy Gobert came back and then when they found their footing they just skyrocketed to the top of the NBA and yes you heard me correctly I said skyrocketed to the top of the NBA because that is the thing that I think a lot of people are forgetting. The Utah Jazz last year, when it came to them winning and losing games, a lot of their losses came when they were suffering injuries to primarily Rudy Gobert. Because Rudy Gobert last season missed over 25 games. And in the games that he missed, they would go on to have a record of 11 and 15. That is below 500. But when Rudy Gobert came back, they would have one of the greatest stretches offensively that they have ever had over the past few seasons and defensively. As though they didn't finish among the top 10 or anything, they definitely were among the better half of the league. And defensively, it was not even a debate on who was the best defensive team in that time span as they were holding teams to under 100 points. And in that time span, let me just name some of the teams that they held to less than 100 points. Toronto. Houston, Portland, Boston, and yes, the Golden State Warriors as well. Not once, not twice, but on three separate occasions. And on those three separate occasions, they beat that team by nearly over 20 points each and every single time. And they held them by less than 100 points each and every single time. This is a team that is not to be laughed at. And when it went to the playoffs, 
that upset the Oklahoma City Thunder, a team that had two All-Stars, a supplementary piece in Carmelo Anthony, one of the greatest offensive rebounders in NBA history and Steven Adams. They beat that team in less than seven games, and when they beat them, they would go on to challenge the Houston Rockets, and though they would fall in five games, they went further this past season than any single person could have predicted. And before I wrap this video up, I gotta give a shout out to Quinn Snyder because Quinn Snyder definitely deserves a lot of props for what he did with this organization. They lost their best player in Gordon Hayward and a lot of people expected the Jazz to hit the rebuild button, but no, they balled out phenomenally and Quinn Snyder is definitely a part of that philosophy. So now that you know that Rudy Gobert was injured, now that you know that Don Mitchell wasn't given the keys to the team until about 20 games in. Now that you know what this team can do with Rudy Gobert and all their pieces healthy, now that you've seen what they did in the playoffs against OKC, now that you've seen Donovan Mitchell's rookie year and you know he's only going to get better, now that you know that Quinn Snyder is a phenomenal coach and is possibly going to win the coach of the year next season, now that you know all that, do you still want to sleep on the Utah Jazz? I mean, the question is to you, because I definitely think that this team can win over 50 games next year as they won 48 games last season. And though they were the fifth seed last year and the West has gotten tougher, let's be real, the difference between the Portland Trailblazers, who were the third seed, and the Minnesota Timberwolves, who were the eighth seed, was two games. So I don't think it's that big of a deal that they were the fifth seed last year. And yes, the West is tougher. A lot of the teams that got better, such as the Lakers and the Thunder, the Lakers got to learn how to play together. and the Utah Jazz don't have that kind of problem because they're going into next season with the same players and they need some shooters. The Lakers definitely need some shooters. The spacing is going to be off a lot of times on the team. And then when you look at the Thunder, Russell Westbrook has still not proven that he can lead a team to anything that is worth any type of significance. So I don't even want to hear people say the Oklahoma City Thunder because Russ can get all the triple doubles that he wants. If he can't lead a team to wins and the difference between last season and this season is still going to be like one game, that doesn't matter to me. I don't want to hear people bring up the Thunder. So the only teams that I can definitively say are better than the Utah Jazz going into next season that I can see them having a better record without question are the Houston Rockets and the Golden State Warriors. So do not sleep on this Utah Jazz team. Rudy Gobert could possibly be an all-star and an all-NBA player. And Donovan Mitchell, he for sure is going to make that all-star team because if he can lead this team to over 50 wins and be the third seed in the Western Conference and make it to the second round and possibly the Western Conference Finals, I think we're going to have to start having conversations on if Donovan Mitchell is a top 10 player in the NBA. Yeah, I went there. So you guys let me know in the comment section what you thought about this video. Follow me on Twitter and all my social media. Those links will be down below. Also, you guys, make sure you subscribe if you're new to the channel. Hit the bell next to my name to be notified after each and every video. This is your boy, Young Mustard, signing out. Y'all have a great day. I'm out. Peace.